Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com, and I want to quickly show you how to import the Java scanner into your applications. Now, I've got a replet here, as you can see. It's got a little bit of Java code. If I click run, it says hello world, but I want to do more than hello world. I want to grab input from the user. So maybe I'm going to change this hello world to a question. How old are you? Because I want input from the user. And as we all know, if we want input from the user, one of the classes we can use is the Java scanner. So I say scanner, scanner equals new scanner and provide system.in as the parameter. And all of a sudden I've got these red squiggly lines over here because it says, hey, I can't find scanner. I have no idea how to resolve scanner. It cannot be resolved to a type. So how do you fix that? Well, there's a couple of ways. So one thing you can do is just say java.util.scanner equals new java.util.scanner. It looks like I might need a little bit more real estate here to fit everything in. There we go. And that will fix the problem. Even there's a little red line under there. If I run this application, it's gonna run no problem. There we go, that error went away. And now if I run the application, I can say string age equals scanner dot next to get input from the user. And then I can do a little system dot out dot print lawn and print something witty to the user like, oh, I don't know, age plus is a good age to be. So there you go, I have now use the scanner. I haven't done an import from scanner, but my code is gonna work. Watch this. If I click run, I'm gonna get a little prompt. How old are you? And then the Java scanner, which was not imported, but explicitly referenced is gonna jump into action. And then when I provide some information like 49, it says, hey, 49 is a good age to be. Now, we did not import the Java scanner there. We explicitly referenced it. What if we don't explicitly reference it? What are our options? Well, we've got a couple. One is to just put an explicit import here. Say import java.util.scanner. And you might be wondering, what does it mean to import java.util.scanner? Well, you know, a bunch of classes like system and string and boolean and double and exception are all part of java.lang and you got free access to them. But java.util.scanner, that's in a different package. It's in java.util and you have to reference a package through an import or an explicit reference in the code if you wanna use a piece of code from another class. But with that import added, if I run this class again, well, we all know what's gonna happen here. It's gonna prompt me to say, hey, how old are you? And well, I haven't aged any here, although maybe you have from listening to me. If I type in 49, I say 49 is a good age. Now, that is an explicit import. You can also be wild, be a wild man and throw the wild card import in there as well. And if you click run, this will also work. The scanner will jump into action. It won't have any problem being resolved as a type and your application will run. It will ask you, how old are you? And then once again, you could type in your name and it prints it out. Now, this is known as the wildcard import. It not only imports just the scanner class alone, but it gives you access to anything in the math, in the util class. So if you wanted to use a random object, random r equals new, new random object generator, well, you could do that uh, because random is in that util class and it's automatically imported in. Notice as I write that code, I don't get an error. But if I was to say scanner explicitly, well, boom, I've got an error. I don't have access to other classes in that util package. So there you go. Now, a lot of people think there's a performance implication by using the wildcard. There's not. It's just a matter of personal preference, whether you like to use the wildcard or not. A lot of advanced senior developers like to have the explicit name listed. So when they look at the class, they know exactly what's been using being used there. And it can also avoid name conflicts like we get with the date object, which just happens to be in the java.sql and java.util packages as well. But there you go. That's how you import the Java scanner class into your applications. You can 
use the wildcard import, you can explicitly import Java scanner through import java.util.scanner. And you know, if you want to, you can actually just use the name java.util right there in your code and explicitly reference it. And if you do that, well, you don't actually have to import the Java scanner. It's automatically available to you. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. We've got lots of great tutorials on Java, enterprise software development, DevOps, microservices, you name it. If you're interested in my personal antics, you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And why don't you subscribe on the YouTube?